So quick video this evening. Uh, just want to uh, touch on a few topics really, really quickly and just reinforce why I'm buying silver, why I'm buying gold, and why I'm preparing for things that I see in this country that are, to me, very disturbing and are actually warning signs. Uh, one of them being, and here's a very big warning sign right here, uh, this just came out today. Southern California home sales plunged 17%. Prices increase modestly in January. We are here in Southern California. This is one, if not the hottest real estate markets in the entire U.S. Uh, this has been one of the hottest real estate markets for decades. And when I see articles like this, where home sales in Southern California are plunging double digits, 17%, this raises an alarm. Uh, this is something we haven't seen in a very, very long time, and it's continuing uh, to happen and occur throughout California. Another article a friend sent me today, San Diego medium home price at 542,000, sales way down. Uh, this was an interesting article. Resale condos in San Diego County are down 25% from last January to this January. New home sales in San, Di in San Diego County fell 20% in January from a year earlier, hitting an 11-year low. I mean, this is, I mean, this is scary stuff. This is something we have not seen for a very, very, very long time. Um, and unlike the stock market, which is completely rigged, com completely um, manipulated, and not really giving us an accurate temperature of what is going on out there, I think the, the real estate market is much more accurate. And we're seeing um, huge amounts of inventory coming onto the market. We're seeing homes staying on longer, uh, days on market e extending. And in some parts, we're seeing prices coming down. To me, it doesn't really matter if prices are going up. Who cares? What matters is the amount of listings and the amount of sales. And the amount of listings up in San Diego County, Orange County, Riverside County, LA are all in double digits. And when I start seeing sales numbers decreasing like this, this is a major, major red flag. Um, and, and, and so anybody telling you, out there that there's no inflation going on. Look at the price of housing, look at the price of automobiles, look at the price of a loaf of bread, a hamburger, go out to dinner. You will see major inflation. Your paycheck is not keeping up with the inflation. Here's another interesting article came out in Zero Hedge today. Average new car payment hits record high, $545 per month. I mean, this is just blowing me away. When you look at the average medium home price in Orange County at about $680,000, um, LA County probably around $700,000, um, and you look at average car payments of $545, who in the world can afford to do this? This is just uh, uh, reinforcing everything we speak about, uh, verifying uh, you know, everything that we've been talking about, people living paycheck to paycheck, people in an enormous amount of debt, uh, seven million plus people delinquent on their car payments. And I wonder how many people are falling behind on their on their home payments now. And uh, I, I believe that we're probably going to see an, up uh, an uptick in home uh, home delinquencies, uh, where people just aren't going to be able to to make their mortgage payment. That's coming because people are absolutely strapped. These jobs that are coming into the market, they're not paying enough money. They're part time, and they're just not going to to be able to support the economy. And so these, again, continue to tell us why you and I need to prepare. This isn't uh, doom and gloom. This is the real world. This is the real economy, not the manipulated Dow Jones, not the rigged stock market. This is the real world where people are living paycheck to paycheck, where people are losing their cars, they're losing their houses, and they're just losing the American dream. Uh, this is more bad news. The Commerce Department... Uh, the Commerce Department's Bureau of Economic Analysis measured 2018 
18 growth at 2.9%. We did not break 3% as forecasted. Forecasters are predicting GDP will continue to decline. Yet, stock market is going up, even though we were down about 70 points today, uh, but we are getting near record highs. We have retail in the toilet. We have auto sales in the toilet. We have housing sales in the toilet. Um, you name it, it's all bad. Yet, the stock market just rolls along. It is so detached from reality that it's almost hard to watch. Uh, but we have Jerome Powell. Uh, he's confirmed that the central bank will end its balance sheet reduction. So that $50 billion a month that they were supposedly uh, uh, rolling off their uh, bank sheet, no longer going to happen. Uh, this means that the 3.2 to 3.4 trillion dollars that the Fed purchased mortgages and treasuries with, with quantitative, you know, ra you know, with quantitative easing one, two, and three, uh, all this is going to remain on the Fed's books. So this is uh, again another warning sign. There was a uh, another very good article on Zero Hedge today. And it was talking about uh, the safety of the system. And it broke down a few statistics, which I think were pretty interesting. Uh, going back to Lehman Brothers. Uh, Lehman Brothers, before uh, the implosion uh, back in 2008, uh, was leveraged 44 to 1 when it filed for bankruptcy. The Federal Reserve currently has $39 billion of capital supporting $3.9 trillion of assets. They're, they're leveraged 100 to 1. This means that a 1% loss on their assets would wipe out all of their capital. This amount of leverage is three times higher than before the 2008 crisis. Think about that for a minute. You think things are heading in the right direction? Do you think you should just stay asleep and just hope nothing's going to happen? It's already happening. It's happening right now. This thing is being held on by a rubber band. And I don't care when people go, oh, I've been hearing about this for years. Listen, I heard about it and then 2008 hit. Okay, we heard about it uh, for years that, you know, it could only, you know, these markets, these, this real estate market could only go on for so long. And nobody even blinked. People just thought that it's going to continue to go on and on and on and on. And then 2008 hit and it ended. And so for these people who think that just because something hasn't happened yet, it's not going to happen. They've gotten complacent. Um, of course, you know, so many people have been been. Um, yelling fire for so many years that nobody believes a lot of these people now. And I get that. But I, I think when you really truly look at, and verify what is going on, this thing is going to hit and it's going to hit hard and it's going to be much worse than 2008. This is mathematically impossible to avoid. And just because it hasn't happened yet or it didn't happen last year or two years ago doesn't mean that it's not going to happen. The longer that this thing persists, the worse it's going to fall. And so we're, we're acquiring debt every day. We're getting buried with debt. When we collapse, this thing is going to be a hundred times worse than it was in 2008. And the reason being, because all we did was try to buy ourselves out of debt, we acquired more debt, and now we're going to pay a major, major price for it. You cannot buy yourself out of debt. They put a Band-Aid on a gunshot wound, and here we are today, and they're hoping that this thing doesn't collapse. But at some point, it's going to be out of their control. It's going to be out of their hands. These markets are going to spiral out of control because the markets are bigger than them. They're bigger than the central banks. And on top of that, we now have a global recession taking place. We have things happening right now all at the same time. We're going to witness a global recession take place. And there's nobody in the world that's going to be able to avoid the damage or the pain that is coming to America, that's going to come to Europe, that's going to come to China, uh, that's going to come to Latin America. It's going to affect everybody. This whole thing is connected. And we're the biggest debtor nation of them all. And 
we've devalued our dollar 97 percent and by doing what we're doing we're going to continue to just annihilate the u.s dollar and if you're not holding real assets like the two most undervalued assets in the entire world gold and silver you my friend are going to be in big trouble and for you people who say well it's you know it's not going to save your life during a shit hit the fan or through a depression uh, you need guns and you need a can of beans well that's great but after the dust settles and we get back to a monetary system your can of beans your can of rice your bottle of water isn't going to be worth much the guy holding real money silver and gold is going to win Okay, we're not going to be in a depression forever. We could be in a depression for six months or six years. But when we come out of it, the people holding really real money are going to prosper. They're going to be 100 miles ahead of everybody else because they have the real money. Paper money is on borrowed time. India knows it. Russia knows it. China knows it. The central banks know it. I know it and you know it. For the people who don't know it, you better wake up. For people out there that think nothing can happen, that uh, this is just fear mongering, let's just go into the stats. Let's go into statistics. The Fed's balance sheet is four times larger than it was at the start of the last recession. The Fed's fund rate is 2.25%. The Fed has very little room to stimulate the economy and support the financial markets using traditional measures. Like I said earlier, two points is nothing. We go into a recession, we even go into a Great Depression. Two points, I mean, we're gonna be at zero in the blink of an eye. We may even have to go negative. Uh, you will be paying money to put your money in a bank. Okay. Expect more quantitative easing during the next recession. No brainer, there are, there are no, no other tricks up their sleeves. If they boost their balance sheet to six, eight, or $10 trillion, this would leverage, this, this would be leverage on steroids. What would it do to the value of the dollar at this point? The dollar would be obliterated. And we are on the path uh, the path right now and witnessing this happening right now as the Fed has about, I don't know, four, $4.5 trillion on its balance sheet. What's a couple more trillion? This will annihilate what's left of the US dollar. The Fed's normalization is far from normal. The Fed is redefining normal to support inflated and overvalued asset prices and accommodate the market. It is just making the bubbles bigger. It is putting you in more danger. And I cannot, I, I don't know how to say it any better, but you better really be paying attention to what's going on and you better get yourself out of debt. If you're in debt, you need to be paying your debt down and you need to be acquiring whatever amount of hard assets you can. But number one, get your debts paid down. When the Fed no longer can step in and manipulate these markets, we will then have real price discovery. And it won't be the overvalued prices that we're witnessing today. You know, we look at Venezuela right now. Maduro unloads another eight tons of gold from Venezuela's central bank. Um, that was in Zero Hedge also. And for the people out there that just call this metal archaic and barbaric, this guy's been selling tons of gold the last couple months. And, and I mean tons of gold. Uh, large airplanes landing to pick up the gold and fly it out. So this archaic barbaric metal that nobody seems to want uh, somebody is flying large airplanes in and scooping it up so that he can, you know, raise cash to pay, pay, pay the bills in Venezuela, or maybe he's putting in other, other countries that he's planning to go to. I don't know. But there is no shortage of people um, in demand to purchase gold, large amounts of gold. So when people tell you that nobody wants it, it's archaic, it's, you know, it's passe, um, central banks countries, investment groups around the world are hoarding silver and gold. Take a look at JP Morgan, Jamie Dimon, and take a good look at what's sitting in their vaults. So when we're seeing large airliners flying into Venezuela and flying out with tonnage of gold, that should tell you that there is quite a demand 
for the shiny metals. We will continue to see political uncertainty here in America, across the globe, you name it. Trump had a, uh, had a tweet today, very interesting. He said that the FBI broke into an attorney's office, being uh, Cohen. Why, why didn't they break into the DNC to get Hillary's server? Question mark. So we will continue to see the socialists attack Donald Trump. The globalists are going to attack Donald Trump. The media will continue to attack Donald Trump. Hollywood will continue to attack Donald Trump, all while they continue to divide this country, while they're promoting civil unrest and civil war in America. And it's another reason why you must be ready. Now, I took the time out of my day today. I had a few dollars left. Um, and so I had to go out and, and I bought more of this, another incredible asset that you know is easy right now to purchase. When something happens, you're not gonna go to your local gun store or to your local Walmart and buy this stuff. It will be off the shelves within hours. Um, went and bought more training ammo. Uh, I train a lot with this aluminum. It's cheap and my Glock eats it like jelly beans. So I train a lot with that. Uh, so I just went and, and just bought about another 500 rounds today so I can train over the weekend. And uh, this is another reason why I believe firearms are number one. We are going to continue to see civil unrest. We are, on the, we, uh, we are on a verge of a civil war. The civil war has taken place. It's taking place in our political system right now. And as I've said many times, we're one, maybe two events away from the civil war actually turning hot. Some people think that that has already started. Uh, when we see the amount of assaults, on people wearing Trump hats, um, their cars being lit on fire because they had a Trump sticker, uh, you know, just people randomly being assaulted uh, for wearing a hat or having a Trump sticker or um, voicing their opinion publicly. So I, I really truly believe that the number one asset is security and that you sh should seriously, if you don't have a firearm right now, you, sh it, you should seriously consider getting one and when you do, make sure you train. Go to your local gun store, talk to them about training. If they recommend somebody, make sure you are training. Um, 13 Republicans voted for ending Trump's national emergency to build, build the wall. Um, th I mean, here's your Republicans already stabbing Trump in the back, have no loyalty to you, have no loyalty to America, don't care about protecting America, leave the borders wide open. These people, again, no loyalty to the United States of America. And while the Republicans are already folding on the wall and stabbing our president in the back, uh, this was on CBS. Um, I mean, this is, this is just appalling. This is what's happening when we continue to allow people from all over the world, when we ha where we are allowing uh, terrorist organizations to just walk into America. Uh, MS-13 planning to target off-duty cops at their homes. And so they just want to flex uh, their, their strength and their authority. And uh, these are real threats. And uh, NYPD is very, very concerned about that. Uh, this just came out also. I mean, this is continuing to go on every day here in America. Uh, 7,000 migrants apprehended in one week uh, at the Texas border sector. That's not uh, including California, Arizona, New Mexico. Um, this is what America is dealing with every day now. Invaders, illegal aliens, drug cartels, terrorism. This is coming to America. This is just the beginning. These socialists want to disarm you. They want these borders open. Um, they want to completely bankrupt America. And I truly believe that the way they're really going to get Trump, they're not going to get him on Russian collusion. I think they'll just bankrupt the economy. They'll bankrupt uh, these markets and, and throw this all into Trump's lap and blame him. And at this point, things will be very, very chaotic and dangerous in America. This isn't Trump's fault. Trump didn't create $22 trillion of debt. Um, many, many decades of abuse and pillaging of the system, robbing, 
robbing these pension funds, robbing Social Security, um, getting us into these wars all over the world that cost trillions of dollars, bailing out foreign banks during the last recession, bailing out American banks, American uh, automakers, putting that all on you and I. This is why we're $22 trillion in debt. This is why we live in a bankrupt country. This is why we must be ready. Good. It doesn't matter how how much CNBC or Fox Business News or the people you know on the stock market are telling you how rosy things are. We live in the real world, and the reality of it is things are bad. Get your debts paid down. Make sure you have security. Make sure you have some precious metals. You know, diversify. I'm not telling you to put all your money into metals. I'm not telling you to put all your money into security. I'm not telling you to put all your money into cash. I think you need to diversify. I think you need to be very, very cautious what's happening in these markets and extremely cautious at what is happening in this country politically and socially. Have a great week. I'll talk to you all very, very soon. God bless.